Good morning. My name is Carrie Barnum. I am the marketing director for New Shelves Books, and I am filling in for Amy today for Free Advice Friday. It's a, about 45 minutes to an hour where we answer all of your book marketing and publishing questions for free. So I am excited. We've got quite a few emails to go over today, um, but of course you can always type in a question in the chat box or the Q&A box, um, and we will answer. Let's see. All right. Doo -doo -doo. Just going to go in and check here. All right. Let's go to the Q&A box first. All right. April is asking if Christmas is a good time to release a book. It can be if your book is in any way related to Christmas, if it is Christmas themed, it, maybe it's a romance book that's centered around Christmas or something like that. It can be. However, I would recommend that you actually release in late November to early December. If you release right at Christmas, your book's going to get lost in the shuffle. You probably will not get a lot of traction because people are, you know, they're buying presents, they're going to dinners, they're going to parties. They're not so much going to be looking for new books to buy on Christmas. So again, if it's something that surrounds Christmas, it makes sense to do it late November, early December. However, if it's not, if you're just feeling like, hey, I want to get this book out there, I strongly recommend that you wait until January. Not only does that um, give you time when people are not as busy, but you also will get a um, a pub date that's fresh. You'll have a 2020 pub date opposed to having a 2019 pub date that's only new for like five days. All right. Miss Shira over here is saying, once you self-publish audio, can you still traditionally publish with an agent? Any rec recommendations on how to get cover art for your self-published -pub work? Well, if you are doing an audio book, it really depends. If you self-publish, um, if you use anything like ACX, if you're using something that does require a contract or that requires a exclusive rights, you would have to follow that contract. However, generally speaking, when you publish something, you can go on to publish traditionally, but some publishers will not take something that's already been published and um, republish it. It really just depends. Um, as far as that cover art goes, I highly recommend that you make sure that you get um, images that you've paid for or are royalty free. Um, many book cover designers know how to source this for you. That's what they do. And that's what we generally do is we work with designers who know what they're doing. They get all the rights and they make sure that everything's checked out, but we do pay for our cover art. Um, of course, you can go to places like Pixabay um, and other places where you either pay for the art or you pay a fee for the art. Um, just keep in mind that if you're going somewhere very popular like that with free or very inexpensive images, that image could be used on other books. Um, so that's something to keep in mind depending on what genre you're in um, and what your goal is with your books. Now, Wendy is asking if, um, did Amy say that we should have our audiobooks done professionally? I am confused because she interviewed Derek Doker. I'm afraid I probably just butchered Derek's name, and I'm so sorry, um, about doing your own. I had already heard the presentation, so I don't know what her take on it was. Here's the thing. Some people can do their own audiobooks beautifully. Same thing for self-publishing. Some people are really on top of it and they can put out a quality, a quality piece and some people aren't cut out for it. So if you're willing to do the work, if you are able to and you're interested in doing your own audiobook, you can really churn out some beautiful pieces um, and some great audiobook content. It all depends on you. I don't think there's a one size fits all, just like there's not a one size fits all for publishing. If we change content in our books, do we need a new ISBN? I was told that we need a new ISBN if we change the title, subtitle, or the name of the author. Well, Wendy, there's a couple of rules, I guess, that we kind of go by. Absolutely. If you have a new title, subtitle, or author name, you must get a new ISBN. If you change the trim size of your book, 
you must get a new ISBN. For content, you don't have to. You can do a new edition if you have new content, especially if it's outdated content that you've updated. And that lets people know that it's still the same book, basically, but that you've updated new content, it's fresh, it's new. Um, so you can do a second edition. A lot of people do that if they're changing the cover art as well. However, you don't want to say it's an updated or revised edition unless you've changed the book at least 40%. So if you are changing the entire book cover, you're updating content, let's say your book has a lot of research and studies in it, and you are updating to reflect current studies, and there's quite a bit of changes in there, that would be a revised edition. Otherwise, if you're just doing um, new cover art and changing little things here and there, it's just a second edition. Um, however, if you're just updating, let's say that you have a book and you're, you kind of did another proofread and you found some errors and so you're changing things up. If you do that, that doesn't need to have a new edition. It doesn't need a new ISBN. Completely, again, up to you and what you are planning to do with your book. All right, I need to write a book proposal for a first person true crime story. Should I write the chapter summaries in first person or third? Who? Um, that's really hard to answer. Um, I think it depends on how you're presenting. Are you presenting yourself? Are you? Yeah, I think it could go either way. You could make either one work, but I think that if the book is in first person, the summaries may make more sense and follow along with the overall theme better. But again, you've got to actually put it together, read through, have someone else read through and make sure it makes sense, make sure that it flows and it doesn't just sound awkward. Yes, Sandra, I did get your question via email and actually let me hop on over there so that I can read it. All right, Sandra's question was um, about selling books to book jobbers such as Permabound or Mackin. My small press has been contacting school libraries about buying my book series for their school libraries. Then I noticed that my own district has this on their website. The following vendors are approved for book orders. Permabound, Fullet, Mackin. I guess with Ingram, being with Ingram isn't always enough. So your question here is, is just being an Ingram the enough to get you into libraries? And the answer here is kind of multifaceted. There are um, wholesalers and your wholesalers are Ingram, um, either directly or through Ingram, Spark, Baker and Taylor, Brodart. Those are wholesalers and these are um, companies that will list your book and then they, um, they will ship it out at a discount. Generally, they require a 50 to 55% discount to sell directly to libraries and bookstores. Um, but when they do this, they are just cataloging your book. They're not selling your book. Um, and you can either do this through like Ingram Spark, you can get into Ingram, um, or if you're Baker and Taylor, you can have offset books that go into a warehouse. Um, so that's a, a wholesaler. A distributor is someone who you have your books, they are holding your books and they're warehousing them and they're fulfilling orders to those wholesalers. They um, are, let's say you got 10,000 books printed. They're holding your books. They have a relationship with Baker and Taylor and Ingram. So they're getting you into the wholesaler and they are then getting your book to the wholesaler who then um, will take orders from bookstores, libraries, things like that. A jobber is a little bit different. A jobber is like a wholesaler in the sense that they have your books except for they actively go sell them. If a, um, a jobber accepts your book or they're working with your publisher, then they are actually being, they go out and they sell your book. Not only that, but once they order it, the jobber will say, okay, I think this book is amazing. I think your school library will like it. And the librarian says, okay, let's order it. 
a week later, the jobber shows up, they unpack, and they deliver the box. Um, of books and they're actually setting them up so a lot of um, big companies like Costco, Target, Walmart they will use jobbers and I'm sure everyone's seen as they're walking around the supermarket and they see um, I often see it with like the the beer guys they're putting all the beer on the shelf and you ask them a question they're like oh I'm so sorry I don't really work here I just stock the beer that's a jobber. Um, so it's a little bit different and some people will work with jobbers because it's more customer service oriented one thing you have to consider is that jobbers do a little bit more work than a wholesaler because they're actually going out, they're trying to get those sales and they are delivering the books. The, here's the big thing, because Baker and Taylor does have reps that will try to sell books to libraries and things like that, but the jobbers are the one who are delivering. They're showing up at Barnes and Noble and putting those books up on the shelf. So a jobber will expect to have a 60 to 65% discount on your book. Let's be honest, guys, if you're doing print on demand, you probably can't afford that and keep your book at a um, marketable, marketable price. So if that is the case, you would probably need a print offset. I don't know exactly what your setup is, Sandra, but um, I hope that helps you understand. And as far as libraries go, most libraries will order from Baker and Taylor. Not all of them order from Ingram, but many do. But Baker and Taylor is a big one. Again, they uh, Baker and Taylor and Follett are um, owned by the same people, same company. So if you get into Baker and Taylor, you most likely will have better success with libraries if that's your main market. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go over to the chat box here so I don't miss anything. Um, I thought I heard Amy recommend this distributor, Pathways, um, but I can't find my notes on that and I don't see it mentioned in her library marketing course. Are there distributors she recommends? We often work with Pathway Books and they are amazing. Um, it is a distributor that we work with where you provide them books. They then use their relationships with Baker and Taylor and Ingram and all those places to get your books into their catalogs. Pathways is great for the US. Um, there are certainly other ones that you can look into. There are smaller distributors. You can look into Canadian distributors. I know we have a couple of attendees from Canada. So you just have to see what fits for you. Look at the pricing models and see exactly what works for you. However, again, most of these, you're going to need offset printing. If you're using print on demand, that means that you're then ordering books from Ingram Spark, author copies from Ingram Spark, and shipping them to Pathways. Then you're paying Pathways a fee. So keep in mind that the, the print on demand model doesn't necessarily lend itself to that kind of distribution. Okay, and Sandra, if I didn't answer your question appropriately, or if I didn't hit everything that your question was about, please let me know. Um, I see some responses as I was talking, so if I didn't quite answer, just let me know. All right, Stephen, what are the price points for endings of books pricing? Example, 0 0.97, 0 0.99, 0 0.00 mean and have significance. In similar vein, would it be better to have a book priced at $20 with a higher discount for retailers instead of $18.99? Well, Stephen, that depends on your market. The thing is, is that you have to be careful not to outprice your market. So if your book is set at $20, but all your competitors are at $17.99, it's going to hurt you. Um, you do have to have a full trade discount for bookstores, which is 55% on Ingram Spark, 40% to the end purchaser and bookstores. Um, so if that, if bookstores are your market, you have to make sure that you get them the discount that they need, but you also have to make sure that you're priced within your competitor range or else you price yourself out of the market and it's not worth, um, it's not worth their shelf space to carry your book. Now, if you're working with libraries or your libraries are your main goal or you're going straight to Amazon, let's say, Pricing can be a little bit different. Libraries, of course, like to see a full discount. However, they're often willing to purchase a book at about 25% discount. So you have a little bit more leeway that way. Again, it, and this is the beauty of publishing and especially self-publishing. It comes down very often to your own goals and working around that.
As far as pricings, 0.97 is often used for discount books. I do not recommend that. If you are going to price your book, I'd recommend ending in 99 cents or a flat um, dollar. So either $20 or $18.99 are good. I would not go with the 0.97. Does New Shelf's books provide the same services for authors now that Amy is part of Bestseller Builders? That's a great question. So some of our services we still offer and some have been folded into Bestseller Builders. Bestseller Builders is um, a, a new program that is very extensive. It really launches an author's full platform and helps launch either a new book or um, a your first book, depending on how it is. One author we did actually started a series, so she got um, three books out while we were working with her. And so this program is just a more extensive package. We used to do a lot of small consulting here and there, um, and we don't do that as much anymore. We've really focused on working with people in a longer term situation because we find it's just more helpful, and more valuable for the authors to work that way. However, we do still provide library mailings. We're still doing bookstore mailings, um, the library classes. So there are still many, many programs that are still running, even with bestseller builders. If you have a question about a specific service, feel free to reach out. You can, um, of course, email us at info, I-N-F-O, at newshelves.com. All right, how do we as self-publishers get a book jobber? You have to apply. You basically have to go to them and you have to apply and ask if they would be willing to work with you. They will want to know your terms. Again, they're generally going to want books that are around 60 to 65% discounted. Um, they'll ask your terms as far as shipping, all of that kind of thing. So you can go and you can apply to them, but keep in mind that you will need to work out the terms with them and it may not be a profitable venture for you as a self-publisher, especially if you are print on demand. All right, hi, Bob. Um, Bob says, I have a new book coming out on Tuesday. I can't talk. Coming out on Tuesday by Princeton Architectural Press and I am disappointed by the lack of press they got me. I'm doing a few radio interviews, but that was all for me. Can you explain if New Shell's books can be hired to help with this type of marketing to help me increase exposure? I will add that it seems like with each year, prime publicity is increasingly difficult to score. Bob, you're not wrong. Um, publicity is really hard to get, and we are not a PR team. We certainly do marketing. We do ads. Um, we offer a lot of um, uh free things that where authors can go get their own publicity and they can work. And I certainly recommend um, anything and everything you can learn from Sandra Beckwith. She's at buildbookbuzz.com. Um, but publicity is one of those things that's ongoing and it is so hard to get. Um, we are finding more and more that um, radio is great, but what's really hot is podcasts. So if you can find some podcasts you think would fit your works and your genre and you go out and ask if they'd be willing to host you as a guest, that's a great thing to do. Um, again, just getting on that media is hard, but I would focus on blogs and there are a ton, a ton of um blog tours and blog tour companies that do lovely work getting you out there and that really helps boost your SEO and doing the podcast it really helps another thing I'd really recommend is making sure that you have a social media presence I I always say that Facebook and Twitter and Instagram it is the coffee house of today 30 years ago you'd meet up at a coffee house and you you'd hang out and you chat with your friends and that's how you got you know, your connections. People don't do that so much anymore. Now they're on social media and that's where they're connecting. That's where they're keeping their friendships. And that is where they're sharing books that they like and news and all that sort of thing. So being on social media is a really big deal. Um, but as far as actual PR work, I'm afraid we don't do that. Um, However, if you would like some more ideas, Bob, feel free to email us and I'd be happy to send you that, um, send you some helpful articles and maybe some things that could get you started. All right. 
Um, I have in my notes where Amy shared a link to share the book PDF Mobi EPUB for reviewers to download free. There are several um, programs that work for that. You can go to bookfunnel.com. Another one is Book Connect, and that's a program with Debbie Drum where you actually um, upload your book files and then you can securely share them with a link or through email. Um, and I highly recommend those. Many, many um, reviewers and bookstores and things are very familiar with those sites. So if you use those, it's a secure way to share your book with, for a free download. You can require an email address or not require it, and that way you can stay in touch. How do self-published authors get into Ingram, Spark, Baker and Taylor, et cetera? And which platforms do we recommend? So Ingram, Spark, the most popular way to get into Ingram, Spark is to do print on demand through um, our, I'm sorry, let me backtrack. It's not Ingram, Spark. Ingram, Spark is the print on demand um, access that can get you into Ingram. Ingram is the wholesaler, not Ingram, Spark. It's two separate companies, same family name. So it's still got Ingram in it, but they are separate. And Ingram is, in my opinion, by far the easiest wholesaler to get into because of Ingram Spark. You upload your files to Ingram Spark, you agree for print on demand, and Ingram Spark will print your books and then get you into Ingram. Of course, they all take a little cut, so Ingram Spark keeps a little cut, Ingram keeps a cut, and then they offer the end buyer, the bookstore, or the library, a discount. Many, many bookstores and libraries will order from Ingram, and so it's great to have. Baker and Taylor is more concentrated on libraries, especially in the last year. Baker and Taylor, though, you have to go and you have to apply. They want to know all about your book. They want to know about your discount, and they want to know what you are doing to market your book. So it's a little bit harder to get into Baker and Taylor, not impossible. Keep in mind that Baker and Taylor is not a, they're not printing books. It's not like Ingram Spark that um, sends on to Ingram. So if you have Baker and Taylor, they will order books from you, which you can either order from Ingram Spark at an author discount and ship on to Baker and Taylor or get offset printing and send them on. So it's a little bit different there, but it's a great thing to pursue. Um, many self-published authors, if they can afford to do an offset print run, We'll use a distributor like Pathways to get into Baker and Taylor because they already have big relationships with them. So their chances are much higher than the average author who's not doing thousands and thousands of revenue every year. Um, if I had to choose two that I would absolutely try to get into, it would be Ingram and Baker and Taylor for sure. And Miss Denise is asking, hi, Denise, great to see you too. Um, I tried to get my children's book printed through Ingram Spark, but the colors, which is the most important part, come out really dull. Can I print with someone and still go through Ingram Spark? Well, no, Ingram Spark is a print on demand service. So that doesn't really work. What you can do is do an offset print run and either apply directly to Baker and Taylor or go to a distributor. Um, another thing when you're looking at Ingram Spark, especially for children's books, um, which as you said, the color is just very important. You can look at the premium color, which also gets you the higher, um, the higher grade paper. So that is something to think on and see how it works out. Um, Print on demand is so hard for children's books, cookbooks, things like that, because to get the color and the detail quality that you really want for those types of books is hard on print on demand. So it usually requires an offset print run, which requires the cash up front. Sorry, I'm sure that's not what you wanted to hear. All right, Stephen, when you talk about discounting at 55%, does this mean that retailers purchase at 45% retail price or 55% off retailer price? So if you are working with Ingram Spark, specifically Ingram Spark, you want to send your discount on your end at Ingram Spark at 55%. Then Ingram Spark takes their cut, Ingram takes their cut, and the end user, the bookstore, will get a 40% discount. The other 15% is eaten up by Ingram and Ingram, um, Ingram and Ingram Spark. So the end retailer, the bookstore, is looking for a 40% discount. 
And Sandra's saying, I wondered if they send me the order after they get it or if they would want books up front, but it sounds like they're trying to get in with full it and be more doable in terms of discount. Yes, Sandra. So going back to the whole jobber question, um, they, um, it depends. It depends on the company. Um, they may ask to have certain number of books on hand, um, but they may ask for orders um, where they order from you and you ship really depends on the company, but they absolutely have a better chance of getting into um, into libraries and in with distributors and wholesalers than you do on your own. I mean, that's what they do. It's, it's a company built around that. All right. If you're in draft to digital, you'll be in Baker and Taylor, but that is eBooks. For physical copies, do we apply in a different manner? My main target is libraries. Absolutely. So if you use draft to digital, they get your eBook in the Baker and Taylor system, which is fantastic. Um, it's one of my favorite things about draft to digital is just all the distribution that they offer. However, for physical books, you have to apply directly. You either need a distributor to get your book into Baker and Taylor, or you as the author and the publisher must apply directly to Baker and Taylor. Um, again, it's a little bit harder to get into Baker and Taylor direct as a publisher because they are looking for proof of sales and marketing. And let's see, I've been doing podcasts like once or twice a week. Unfortunately, TV is no longer possible for most authors. You are spot on. It, it really sounds like you know what you're doing. TV is just harder and harder, but you know what? Not as many people are watching news on the TV. So it's just, it's harder because they have to be more selective because there's not as many programs running. Um, I'm not saying that news on the TV is gone, but it's not nearly as popular. Recent studies show that many people don't have it. They don't watch it. They're getting their news from um, Facebook. I think it said something crazy, like 57% of people are getting their news from Facebook and other social media. So TV is very hard. Podcasts for sure are great though. All right. And Susan says, do, do, do. I'm printing my book offset. Can I get it into Ingram Wholesale directly? Susan, you can apply. If you have your book printed offset, you can apply to Ingram directly. However, they're generally looking for high sales. We're talking about 10,000 a year. Um, so if you have tons of sales and you can apply to them and show that you have the sales and you're doing the marketing, you may get into Ingram directly. However, if you don't, same thing with Baker and Taylor, if you don't, that's when a, a distributor like Pathways can be a great choice because they already have the, the relationship. So you go and apply to Pathways and if they accept your book, they get your book into Ingram and Baker and Taylor. A recommended blog tour company to work with. Um, there are so many, it really depends on your genre. I've been very happy with R&R &R book tours um, Expresso book tours, YA bound book tours is great for, um, young adult books. Um, it really depends on your genre. And if you search, if you search book tour or blog tour, you will find some come up and they're really reasonable, um, for just a couple hundred dollars. They do all the work. Basically they'll send you interview questions. They'll have people review your book if you provide them with the books. Um, or the download link. So it's a great investment. It's great for SEO. And honestly, if you've got a little bit more money and a lot less time, blog tours is, it's a great investment in my opinion. I do not have a recommendation for Jabber, Stephen. Um, I think you'd have to look. You may want to look and see what's local and see what fits for you, but I don't have any particular recommendations, I'm afraid. I found that I can get my book printed cheaply for a bulk order of 1,000 or more. I would like to have a fulfillment company fulfill orders for me for a promotion. Do you know of any that will store and ship using media mail and would ship um, with just an email? Which fulfillment houses would you recommend? Well, I don't know how anyone can ship with just an email because if they just have an email, I'm not quite exactly sure what you mean. Would they ship if they just receive an email? Um, 
not exactly sure. Again, fulfillment houses, you would have to look and see what your particular needs are. Um, there are some great ones out there, but you would have to see what your needs are. A lot of times it depends on a contract with them or it depends on your quantity. Um, but I'm afraid that just off the top of my head, I can't recommend a fulfillment house for you. Sorry. All right, back to email, because I know I've got a couple. Not that one. All right. We got an email um, this week talking about Publica, which is a crypto book sale option. This is super interesting. So I'm sure many of you have heard about Bitcoin, which is the cryptocurrency. And there's this new push, and it's still not implemented yet, but it started called Publica, which is kind of like um, it's crypto publishing, where you put your book up and it is can be used like a crowdfunding option where they fund you with cryptocurrency and then you then give them a token to download your book um, on the crypto sites. Um, so here's the thing. the This is still not implemented yet. It's very new. I think it's a cool option, especially for people who are into all the cryptocurrency and all of that. Um, supposedly, the way that this is set up, it will be um, infallible as far as tracking your sales. It will be um, very hard to replicate or duplicate book files like people may be able to do now with like an ebook or something like that. So it'll be hard to pirate. However, not everyone uses cryptocurrency. Do I think it's a bad idea? No, but I don't think I'd rely on my sales here because not everyone uses Bitcoin. A lot of people think it's kooky. It's not real money. Um, same thing I think will happen with books. I think it's very interesting. I think it's still very fledgling. And I don't think that for right now anyway, it's going to be a big way to push books. I would stay on top of it. And if that's your market and that's your crowd, depending on your genre, it could be really interesting to follow along and see what happens with it. But I would not put it as my big marketing push. And another question was about Selfie, which is a library journal program. So let me go back to that one. Selfie is a library journal program for indie authors and self-published authors where you can upload your book and Library Journal will consider it for review, um, specifically for indies. Now, the thing is, is that when you upload your book, they also require that you give over rights for them to distribute and market and sell your book into any library system that they would like. You don't get any royalties. So you're basically giving away your book for free. They push it as a way for unknown authors to be put in a library catalog. Um, and because the book is free, libraries may pick it up. Here's the thing. If you have a book that is perma-free, let's say that you have a series of six books and your first book is perma-free everywhere because you just want it to lead into the rest of your series, this could be a good option for you. This whole selfie program from Library Journal could be great. If you have one book and it's nonfiction and it covers a whole topic, I wouldn't do this, guys, because it's giving away your book for free. It says right on the agreement that they can distribute your book wherever they want, although it's targeted at libraries, for free, and you get no royalties. I don't think this is a good play. Um, also, it's not like if you're giving it away perma-free somewhere like on your website and you're getting an email address to grow your following. You literally just give it away for free and you get into libraries. Um, not my favorite program. I think, again, it can be used for some people, but overall it's not something that I would recommend you rush out and do. do, do, do. There was one more question on that email. I'm gonna get answered and then I'll go back to the Q&A box. Um, okay, is an Amazon Author Central page important? Absolutely. Um, so the, the person asking said, you can see the results on the KDP site, so why do you need an Author Central page? Author Central is kind of like a free website page where you can put all your book information, you can link to your website, you can put up videos, you can do all sorts of things. 
So when you're doing this, it's it's free marketing. Why wouldn't you do it? But also, if you have an author central page, even if you're self-published through KDP, you um, can follow along. You can claim your books so they all show up on one ni nice, neat page. Or if someone clicks, um, I'm sure you've seen on Amazon when you have a book and then it's got the author and it's hyperlinked and you can click on it and it goes to their page and it shows all their other books. Um, and if you log into Author Central, you can see book scan sales, which is a more um, broad range of sales beyond just Amazon. So highly, highly recommend it. It doesn't take long. Um, I would absolutely do it. If you have a blog, you can link to it. Lots of good things about it. And not there's really no drawback. There's no reason not to do it. So there we go. All right, back to our questions here. All right, is there a replay or transcript of these Friday shares? I'm not where I can take notes and you've given some great things. Oh, thank you, Anna. Um, we do keep them up on Facebook. We also try to put them up on our YouTube. So absolutely, you can get those. Um, if you follow our YouTube channel, which is New Shelves Books, you can see them. If you are on Facebook, you can look us up there. And um, we are doing these every week. So for sure, you can come back and visit us. If you're not signed up for the webinar announcements where it reminds you, be sure to do that um, and look for our replays on YouTube. All right, we've got about uh, five more minutes. So if anyone has any last minute questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box or the um q a box i am just going i'm looking down but it's because i'm looking at facebook to see if there is anything right here that we've got questions for whoops all right so one final question i've got about pre-sales and um the question here was if we do pre-sales on amazon and if they're recommended we don't recommend them anymore. A couple of years back when you did pre-sales on Amazon, what happened is that you kind of built up all your sales and then when you launched, they all hit Amazon at the same time and you could hit the bestseller list and all these sales. It doesn't work like that anymore. What happens now is your sales are counted as they come in. So if you're doing pre-sales, you're missing all those potential sales that could have hit on launch day much, much better to hype your audience up about getting the book on launch day, sending out, um, you know, sending out emails and sending out all your social media announcements on the day of your launch and pushing that way. Um, I know even some of the big publishers aren't pushing the pre-sale. They may have the book up for pre-sale on Amazon um, and other areas, but they're not pushing it there. And certainly if the big, the big publishers are kind of falling back from that, it's good to take note because they often are pushing the trends there. Um, so not recommended. We do recommend, of course, that you launch and that you make a big deal about it. Um, press release is a great thing to do on your launch day. Um, Amazon ads, social media ads, getting the hype there is a much better use of your time and energy than pushing for those pre-sales and pre-orders. All right, guys. I think that's about it. We've gotten all the questions answered for today. So again, thank you for joining me. It was so much fun. My name is Carrie Barnum. I am the marketing director for New Shelves Books and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.